Okay, so today we're going to break down how do financial advisors get paid and how are they compensated? And then also what types of services do each of these financial advisors typically provide so that you can make the best and in most informed decision as it relates to finding the best advisor that meets your financial planning needs. Um, thankfully for today, there aren't that many structures or ways that advisors are compensated. However, I do believe that it's very important that you understand what are the different types of services that you're going to typically receive underneath each one of those structures. So number one, and this is maybe one of the more least common today, although it was one of the most popular in years past, maybe 15, 20 plus years ago. And these are commission-based advisors. So a commission-based advisor almost exclusively works with um, mutual fund companies and offer different types of diversified mutual fund portfolios. And for each one of these mutual funds that they offer, they're typically compensated either on an upfront basis where they get a fairly sizable upfront commission. And then on top of that, they are actually paid additional fees each and every year that you hold those mutual funds. These are typically A share or class A mutual funds. Um, the SEC and other regulatory boards have have really started to scrutinize this commission-based uh, advising because they want to be able to identify that there's no other incentive that these advisors are getting for recommending the different mutual fund families that they recommend. And in a lot of cases, and even on the websites that are out there, um, not picking on them, but as an example, Edward Jones, if you go to their website, a lot of their advisors do commission-based advising. They'll actually show you from each fund family, like American Funds uh, is one of their more popular fund families they represent. Franklin Templeton is another one. There's many, many others. But they'll actually put on their website, they're required to, how much additional compensation they got for recommending those types of mutual funds. So maybe if you're a younger investor, you don't need a lot of hands-on um, management or real financial planning. You're just trying to put some money away and let it sit for 15, 20, 30 years. This type of advisory structure could be one that makes sense for you. Uh, but again, you just have to know exactly what you're going to pay and do you have enough time to make up those more larger upfront commissions. So that's a commission-based advisor. There are still some companies that operate under this. The Fiduciary Act does require advisors to act in the best interest of their clients. And with a commission-based advisor, because there is a compensation for recommending specific fund families, they actually are not considered fiduciary under the rule and really only have to act in what would be deemed generally in your best interest, not specifically a fiduciary. So again, we are seeing this type of relationship kind of dissolve and even companies like the Edward Joneses out there try to transition more into a fee-based type structure. So again, number one, commission-based uh, investment advisor. So number two, there's really two different types of fee-based advisor. So I want to give you a description of those. One is a, a fee-only advisor. So a fee-only advisor is someone who's going to charge either an hourly fee for advice or they're going to charge a set fee for building a specific plan for you. So you're not going to pay a uh, monthly fees for the different types of investments. A lot of times they don't provide actual investment advice regarding um, which fund families are, are the best regarding internal fees to make sure you're maximizing low internal e expenses. But they're more just going to build you a financial plan for the most part. Um, we are seeing uh, more companies start to offer this type of investment advice. Uh, there are some types of clients that like that. The downside, in my opinion, 
is you're not really going to have a very long lasting and deep relationship with that financial advisor. We tend to see a lot of the advisors in this world are either younger or just getting into the financial world and they tend to bounce around from firm to firm. And so you really don't have that deep relationship built that you may get with like a fee only advisor. Uh, but if you just have a couple of questions and you, you don't need ongoing financial planning, then an hourly or a fee only advisor could be the right solution for you. Uh, a fee based advisor. Now this is going to be a financial advisor that is being compensated from the management of the portfolio or investments that you have. So inside this type of a structure, there's really two types of financial advisors as well. One of them is going to be just a traditional fee-based portfolio manager where uh, they'll meet with you, they'll talk about goals and risk at pretty high level, and then they'll build a diversified portfolio that tries to meet those risk objectives for you. Um, that's going to be what people typically call themselves either a broker or a financial advisor, and that's going to be a fee-based, and they are compensated either monthly or quarterly out of those investments that they've chose for you. If you're going to pay for a fee-based advisor, I would recommend that you really consider a fee-based financial planner. A lot of advisors out there do call themselves financial planners, but yet very few of them actually offer comprehensive financial planning advice. So what is comprehensive financial planning advice for us? Well, we are a retirement planning firm and so we try to help pre-retirees or already uh, retired individuals build a financial plan that incorporates all the different components of uh, a household. So one of those is an income plan, uh, an investment plan, a healthcare plan, a tax plan, and an estate plan. Uh, we believe that there's not one individual that is going into retirement or that's already retired that isn't going to need a very uh, structured and defined plan regarding every single one of these items. And so taking it one step further, not just portfolio management, actually building a plan in all of these other areas that all works around the investments, the income, again, tax, health insurance, uh, estate, everything. So. A financial planner is going to also charge a management fee. And in a lot of cases, uh, like ours, our management fee is very comparable and sometimes less than just what a financial advisor fee is. But yet you're going to get much, much more in regards to what are you paying for the advice that you're getting. So that's a fee based financial planner, uh, which again is what we recommend. Uh, for those in getting close to retirement or already in retirement or a fee-based advisor. Um, one quick little side note, if you work with a fee-based advisor of any kind that's charging a portfolio management fee, under the terms of the SEC right now, you are a, they are a fiduciary. Um, if you charge a fee, then you are deemed to be a fiduciary. I would say that you really want to take it one step further. If you ask somebody if they're a fiduciary, if they do fee-based planning, the answer that they'll give you is yes. I think more importantly than that is, are you a fiduciary with uh, skills in all those other areas as it relates to a financial planner, right? So are you a fiduciary that offers financial planning uh, more than just the financial investment advice? So those are the main structures out there, commission-based, you have the fee only, and then a fee-based. We are seeing more commonly the fee-based type structure. Uh, we believe fee-based financial planning is the best option for those to get the most robust and comprehensive um, bang for your buck. If you're out there paying a financial advisor, make sure that you know exactly what you're paying and more importantly, what you're getting for those costs. Mm -hmm.